Cruising along on the Merritt Parkway a while back, I was struck by its natural beauty, unique bridges, and amazing landscaping. But until I did some research, I didn't appreciate its history. I'm Jim Cameron for Talking Transportation, commentary and analysis on getting around in Connecticut. A hundred years ago, the only way to drive between New York and Boston was on Route 1, the post road. If you think traffic's bad today, imagine that journey. So in 1936, 2,000 men began work on the state's largest public works project to date, the $21 million four-lane parkway starting in Greenwich and running to the Housatonic River in Stratford. The adjoining Wilbur Cross Parkway didn't open until years later when the Sikorsky Bridge was built across the Housatonic. As the merit was being planned, a major real estate scandal caught Darien real estate agent G. Leroy Kemp in cahoots with a couple of land brokers as they paid inflated prices for property along the parkway, resold it, and split the proceeds. The Merritt was named after Stanford resident Congressman Schuyler Merritt and is best known for its natural beauty, though most of it was planted, 22,000 trees and 40,000 shrubs. And then there are the bridges since 1991, protected on the National Register of Historic Places. Architect George Dunkelberger designed 69 bridges in a variety of architectural styles, from art moderne to deco to rustic. Their adornments were, of course, better appreciated when cars were poking along at about half the speeds of today, but they're still beautiful. No two bridges are exactly alike. So in short order, the Merritt was being hailed as the queen of all parkways. The parkway at first had tolls, a dime, later 35 cents, at each of three toll barriers, not to pay for the parkway's upkeep, but to finance its extension to Hartford via the Wilbur Cross, named after Wilbur Lucius Cross, who was governor in the 1930s. The tolls were eliminated in 1988. The old toll booths themselves were as unique as the parkway, constructed of wooden beams and covered shingles. One of the original booths is still preserved in Stratford at the Booth Memorial Park. The Merritt's right-of-way is a half-mile wide. The vista is more obvious now since massive tree clearing after a couple of storms in 2011 and 2012, where downed trees pretty much closed the highway. Since its design and opening in 1938, the Merritt Parkway has been off limits to commercial vehicles and trucks. But as traffic worsens on I-95, debate rages from time to time about allowing trucks on the Merritt and possibly widening the road. Either move would probably mean demolition of the parkway's historic bridges, so I don't expect any expansion anytime soon. The best watchdog of the parkway is the Merritt Parkway Conservancy, which has fought to preserve the road's unique character. Their latest battle is against plans for a multi-use trail along the south side of the highway. Costing an estimated $6.6 .6 million per mile, the Conservancy worries that the trees and foliage that would be clear-cut to allow bike and pedestrian users would despoil the ecosystem. This is Jim Cameron for Talking Transportation.